I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Cross ahoy! Cross ahoy! Mighty ship, won't you sail with me? In the storm and thunder, conquer waves and set us free. In the heat of fire. Hey team, is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun review on the Gross Voice. Someone asked me to do this, and uh, I was actually surprised of how much I liked it. Before we begin, like, subscribe, open below. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel, the community, and uh, supporting us as we grow the channel, grow the community, having a great time, learn something at the same time. And uh, at four thousand subs, we're gonna do another premium giveaway. So at the, let's get right to it. Let me just talk about the Gross Voice. Why do you enjoy the video in the background right there? So the Gross Voice. What it is it? It is a uh, tier ten. Uh, so kind Kind of a destroyer slash Kabarov style gunboats, uh, what do you want to call it? It says, uh, compared to the 34 tons of Soviet pride that is the Kabarov's, Grozovoy provides a more balanced performance of a typical destroyer while still retaining some of the attractive qualities of Soviet destroyers. There are plenty of trade-offs between Kabarov's and Grozovoy. For starters, Grozovoy is slower than a Kabarov's, though she is still fast at 39.5 knots, something I do enjoy. I like something above at least 38 knots, and lacks her cousin's 50 millimeter chest plate. This means that Grozovoy has to rely more on hiding in smoke screens and remaining undetected to stay alive. You know, thankfully, Grozovoy has a much better detection range than Kabarov's, 7.6 kilometers base versus the 10, which makes that a little bit easier to sneak up on people and so forth and capping as well. Additionally, Grozovoy has a far superior rudder shift time, and uh, but is somewhat hampered by a disappointingly large turning circle, which makes dodging fire and evading torpedoes just a little bit harder. In terms of firepower, as you can see in the background here, Grozovoy is nothing to scoff at, even alongside his counterpart. Uniquely, she uses HE-42 shells instead of the standard HE-46 shells common to her high-tier Soviet destroyers. These shells deal less damage in exchange for a slightly faster shell velocity. There are small differences, but they are noticeable, especially with two less gun barrels compared to the Kabarovs. On the flip side are torpedoes, both stock and upgraded are faster and travel much farther, allowing Grosvenor to deal massive amounts of damage and flooding the enemy ships, which you're going to see throughout the videos here. From beyond her detection range, something Kabarovs captains can only dream of doing. Finally, Grosvenor has an expensive toolkit of consumables in addition to the standard destroyer loadout of damage control party, smoke generator engine boost. She also gets defensive A, fire, and repair party dedicated in total of five consumables. However, these have a small number of charges each, which is only two unless you build for it. It makes superintendents adding an extra charge. But like Udaloy, Grosvenor is, uh, is a worthy alternative to the flotilla leader line where Kabarov sits. With a proper build and careful handling, she can be prominent threat to any unprepared problem. As you can see right here, addition and out, you know, the guns right here, you can see, look at that, knocking 2300 just for that one salvo alone. Just, I mean, even though it lacks one barrel, uh, or one gun turret compared to the Kabaros. You can see three turrets does that much kind of damage per salvo. Pretty, pretty uh, powerful and incredible for dealing with destroyers, especially with RPF, and you can see in the background. I actually am surprised at how much I do enjoy the Grozovoy. The only downside is if I do want to actually... Um, I would say attack destroyers and uh, you know kind of uh, destroy her DD hunt. You do need maybe a little bit of hydro or some kind of of that nature where uh, you might need maybe some kind of detectable aspect of it. Like you know a vampire's got hydro, Z42, Z52 got the hydro. It does add something small in, and Gdansk all of them have radar. Grosvoy, if you do want to kind of go DD hunting, you gotta have to pay conservatively. Like in this situation right here. Uh, he's gonna, Yo Yang's gonna pop smoke. And I was trying to do different calibers here to see how they do. Now look, I'm loading AP because it's very, very powerful. However, we are getting uh, somewhat some pens if you aim right for, but right there, you gotta aim right at the, you know, kind of near, if you if it did have a citadel, right in that area. But right here, you can see it's gonna overpin. Right there, overpinning the front aspect of the bow. And yeah, it's not doing so great. Overpinning right there again. I think we oversaturated or something. Overpinning again right in this midsection. So right here, I decided to switch HE and kind of see which one's better. I mean, yeah, HE way, way better. Way more damage right there. And you can see, boom, splash one goes down. And you see it right there. That situation, we would have died had he had support or we got radar or hydro. He was in smoke. He did everything correctly. Uh, I just had to rush the smoke, and I was that close in. And using the speed and the Grosvenor and the kind of that Soviet... 
Uh, well, it actually doesn't have any kind of Soviet armor or anything, but it, the ballistics of the shells are incredible. You can see long range right here. Shimakaze, we're just going to nail this guy. I mean, we're literally doing everything. We're going to kill the DD, cap Alpha, and help our teammates out and blow up another DD. That's what you're supposed to do at Destroyer Player if you want to get better. And that's just the aspects of doing everything right there. And I like the shell velocity for us to reach out and touch somebody. Any, like, gearing uh, g guns would have uh, kind of done a little bit more arky, a little bit more difficult to shoot at that range. Notice here the power of the torpedoes right here. They're not so fast. I mean, they're approximately about 65-ish knots. If I take a look at it right here, torpedoes, yeah, 65 knots. You get about a reaction time of 7.4 seconds for base. And you can see what it can do to this unsuspecting Bismarck. And let's say take a look at it. I like the RPF right there, letting me know where to go. Going back to Yu Yang before we uh, dev strike this uh, Bismarck, uh, I had to rush that smoke, and there is no Soviet bias in this an instance. We don't have the Kabarov's kind of style armor if we nosed in. But having front two turret guns and rushing smoke very quickly, I mean, that was just luck right there. And I, I don't know if you can do that uh, a lot uh, in the Grosvoy, but it did what we can. And you can see the mistake I make right here. I didn't see a Z42, and then well, let's take a look at this Bismarck blow up first. And boom, there he goes. That's power of the uh, torpedoes. Unfortunately, we make a mistake of rushing uh, a Z42 in smoke with Hydro, and that's exactly why it's not a very good aspect in this role where you can't just rush smoke. You can't really just go against somebody that's got superior te uh, technology against you in the sense of detection. Here's another video. Just uh, I like the RPF again. The situational awareness. I get my guns pointed in a general direction. I'm capping, spotting, doing everything I need to do as a good destroyer player. Notice that I just use the ability of the... Uh, that, that means someone's capping right now. The ability of uh, the cap detection, and I out-detect this uh, Arigolo. Since I know the cap is not going up, someone's right there. RPF tells me the direction he's in. I've got the guns facing where he's at. Now I know where to go, and I know where to go avoid. Because now I'm not going to go against a Regala because I know he's got that burst fire. I know he's got smoke, that uh, exhaust smoke, so I have no way of detecting him. No radar, no hydro. So pretty much I have to disengage. This is the most conservative move you can do right here. And Grosvoid does it pretty well. Although, like you said earlier, you can hear that the rudder shift was not great. It's still got the speed. It still can maneuver decently. The rudder shift's slow, but hey, you know what? We're running away. It doesn't matter, really. And we're just egressing the area, reassess, reevaluate. Regalo, we're going to have to let him get out of his smoke, let it burn out. And, ooh, we got a submarine right there. We can't deal with a submarine right now. Everybody, he would spot us. As soon as we fire, we get detected. But we did use RPF to de determine where he's at right now, and that's exactly why I like the... The situational awareness, because the Regalo could have gone north, he could have gone south, he could have gone west. The, the RPF allows me to at least know generally where do I need to keep the guns facing. And you're going to go uh, take down his health right here uh, just with three turrets. He's got more turrets than we do. He's got a burst fire. But look, we're just literally just slow rolling it. The HEs look very, very powerful. 1485 damage there. And we're getting these nice pins. Look, 2970 right there. I like this. I mean, the, that's the really good aspect I like about the guns of the Grozovoy. Great shell arcs, great shell ballistics coming out of the barrel. 950 meters per second starting fires doing a lot of damage i like it i like it a lot really really powerful and it's something I really do enjoy. Let me see. Look, yeah, 950 meters per second. You see, boom, right there. goes down Regalo. Very quick shell arcs. Very manageable. Very easy to aim. I like it. It just felt comfortable with the Grozovoy. Maneuverability that we talked about earlier, not the greatest, but it's it's manageable. As long as you know what you're doing, you just kind of be, play a little bit more standoff, conservative-ish. It's got decent speed. Like I said, 39 knots. You can see here we're rushing the submarine, and we can do what we need to do with the depth charges, whatever, if it's clear. And, of course, we're going to go hunt more DDs, all right? You know, you got the Chung Mu in the background here. I'm going to support my team. I'm not going to let a Chung Mu run in the back, free will, and just torp the crap out of all my battleships. So we're doing another roll. We're DD hunting to protect our fleet and our spawn point. And look, the shell ballistics of these guns are really, really good. I do like them. Even at long range, these things are not as wonky, not arky or anything. Very good, manageable. And now we're using RPF to just aim the, the ship straight at them, and we're just going to just use sheer overwhelming force to overpower the... Uh, the uh, smoke. I know he has deep water torpedoes, which is what the Pan Asian destroyer has. So it's not going to be really effective to us. He doesn't have radar because obviously he's using smoke. So all I do is rush this guy, and he's pretty much going to die. So um, Grosvoy is good at that. Like Kabarovs does it very well. Kleber does it very well. So I, I like this kind of aspect of the role. And then once we kill this destroyer, we're going to switch over to the long range gunboating role. See, they're the deep waters. They don't really do anything to us. We're not worried. I got, I got a sense of where he's at. He's shooting from smoke. Got the guns aimed right where I needed to be. As soon as he spots it, boom, we're going to fire uh, first shot, first look, first kill, and we're going to take them out, and that's what a good destroyer player is supposed to be doing. 
Let's see, where is he at? Within two detection. Yep, there he is. Within two something, 2.5. He's for sure detected. And boom, splash two. He goes down right there, taking out another DD right there. And Grozevite, like I said, does very, very good work of it. Now we're spotted. Obviously, the Duncan is spotting us. I built for more long range gunboating because that's what was recommended uh, in the commander build. So let's take a, take a gander of what this looks. Shooting out at uh, about, what, 14.8 to 12. So you can see the shells are not very very hard to aim really i mean the the disperse is not the greatest but you just all you're doing is putting a lot of shells down range now the dpm is manageable it's not like like you know i would say gearing level daring level kind of uh, reloads uh it's just a kind of three to four second kind of area which i still can do and it starts fires great now i'm going to try the juking with this ship now they said that the uh the, the, the what is it called rudder and the return radius is not the greatest so let me put engine boost on and see if i can somewhat juke and dodge shells and that's what i really like about the destroyer players with the engine boost these days because i'm trying to see how i can bait a lot of these battleships to fire at me because remember if they're firing at me they're not firing at my teammates so that's one thing i mitigate look he's drawing fire from three to three other people yet he's still fixated on me a small target to hit you know like i said look so i'm going to juke in reverse to see if i can dodge these shells we do. We decent. We still took some damage, but we do have heals. So yeah, I definitely would recommend if you juke, you get a destroyer that has the ability to have heals or to forgive your mistakes. And now we're still going back and forth. I'm just right, playing with the throttle, seeing where he's aiming at. Is he still aiming at me? Yes, he really wants to kill me. I, I that's exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to just draw as much fire as we can so that he's not shooting on our teammates. And then we're gonna see if we can burn this guy down. Come on, one more fire, get a perma fire going, and again, this thing can start fires very, very well. Let's see. Yep. Come on. One more. A couple, couple more hits right here. He's in reverse. A battleship going reverse. Who would have thought it? Oops. Somebody fired at us, so we're going to throttle juke the shot. He fired again. Or maybe he was firing the Duncan. And boom. Splash three. He goes down right there, and he was firing at somebody else behind us. So, Montana. That's okay. At least we drew a lot of fire, and he wasted all his time and shots on us. And unfortunately, he paid the price for it. So that's kind of my thoughts on the juking right there. I don't think it's as good as, say, a Marceau juking or maybe some other... Um, a quicker de destroyer. It seems like the Grozovoy is still kind of a little sluggish in my personal opinion. But really what this thing has is the ability to heal. It's got the speed. It's got the gunboat power. It, the AP shells do really good damage against uh, broadside destroyers. You're going to see later, even battleships. We're using a uh, HE right here just to see if we can start more fires. Again, this starts a lot of fires. I like the Grozovoy for that reason. It's got defensive AVE, although I think AA is trash. It doesn't really change anything. If you have a CV player, it's good. Take a dog, flak, shell, flak clouds, and also builds an armored upgrade airplane, which is weird, and rebuilds them in the sky. Really funny. Montana goes down with the Shimikaze Torps, so that's the end of him right there. So uh, let's take another look. Okay, here we go. So we're going to uh, take a look at a, uh, shooting at a cru uh, cra I'm sorry, broadside cruiser and maybe a broadside battleship and see how the AP shells do. Now, unfortunately, he is angling right there. We do have a smoke screen to get out of uh, jail free card. And, yep, nobody's uh, radaring us right here, right? Oh, now we get radar. Brisbane, I think, has 12 kilometer radar, so pretty bad right there. We got to get out of Dodge. Look at the torpedo power right there, and let's see if we can get one. Yep, we get enough, and it knocks 10,600 off of somebody. Not bad, not bad. I like it a lot. See if we can start a quick fire on the Schlieffen as we run out of Dodge right here. Notice the, the ability to just get out of Dodge real fast with the engine boost. I do like that aspect of it. The turret uh, traverse is kind of sluggish, slow. I, I mean, I didn't really build for it, but... Again, that's manageable. As long as I have RPF, I know where to point my gun turrets anyways. It makes up for the fact that these are slow traversing guns. And I like, again, I, the guns for me, I like them a lot for the amount of damage they can do. The ballistics, the shell arcs, very, very good right there. And let's take a practice of, on the St. Vincent here and see if we can start as many fires as we can because I know he's got that improved British heal. Look, 2,300 damage. Just trying to shoot the super 2900 damage. Look at that. Just for one salvo of just three guns, and we start a fire. I, I mean, these things, you can't really underestimate these things. They're very, very good, actually, for what they are. I mean, I mean a simple little destroyer firing 130 millimeter guns. I think that's the caliber of the guns. Yeah, yeah. 130 millimeter guns. They pen up to, uh, let's see, what's the pen angle here? Pen. Let me take a look. HE shells pen 22 millimeters. So they pen almost every destroyer that you can, except ones with 50 mil plating. Now, you notice that St. Vincent's healing all his, his health back right now, so we're trying to get another permafire. So, again, I'm just trying to get these arcs, and here we go, switching to the AP. Let's take a look at how the AP does on a broadside battleship. Look at that, 2,800. Ooh, 1,800. Like I said, I mean, that's that's damage right there, ladies and folks. I mean, it is doing some hefty damage, and 2,500 damage, right? And that's 
very difficult to heal back. I mean, you're not it's not fire damage. This is like full AP damage right here. And we're getting overpins. Look at that. This is 130 millimeters is nothing to gawk at. These things are pretty darn powerful, and I like it a lot. That's why I have. I, I'm surprised I don't play Grozo Void. It's an underestimated uh, destroyer, and it's very, very powerful. So, bottom line, what do I think of it? I, I like it a lot. Grozo Void, very, very powerful. Let's take a look at how we do the torpedo runs again here. Again, I don't know what the, the graphics card, whatever is screwed up. I'm running parallels on Windows. I can't see the uh, predictive aim reticle for torpedoes now, lately these days. Help me out, guys, if you have a solution for it for parallels Windows. But here we go. So I'm, I'm taking a look at where this sleeping is. I got the great detection 6.0. I can sneak in closer if I wanted to, not worried about the uh, hydro range. And look, I just shot a, a full spread right there, one on the one at the rectangle, one behind the rectangle. And let's see how they do. Very unsuspecting. He's got a seven-second uh, reaction time right there. And he's got the three in the back, three in the front. And boom, splash uh, one. There we go. That is a torpedo kill right there. So I've noticed I get a lot of torpedo kills with the Groats Void. Very, very awesome. So... Again, bottom line, uh, what do I think of it? Very, very strong. I definitely recommend Grozovoy. If you haven't played it, try it out. That's the Soviet kind of DD, Soviet bias if you want to feel like it, but it is powerful. Guns are awesome. Torpedoes are good. Good smoke, good heals, great detection. And uh, it's just sluggish and poor AA, but that's my thought on it as well. Build will be at the end of the screen uh, or at the end of these videos, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts and comments below what you think of the Grosvoy, what kind of ship or DD, play, or DD Destroyer you're playing these days. And as always, if you see me out there, say hi. Look forward to seeing you guys from, uh, look forward to coming and seeing you guys soon. And as always, you guys stay safe, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend, and have fun. We'll see you soon. Cheers.